audio. All right. Hi, everyone. We are back here for a live lecture. And um, this is Arlene McLaughlin. And Arlene McLaughlin graduated from the Fashion Institute of Technology and worked in the fashion industry for 10 years, where she developed a solid foundation in color and textural blending, as well as honing her artistic eye. Her translation from fabric to canvas and walls was a natural progression. Arlene has created murals and wall finishes for clients in both commercial and residential settings on Long Island, Manhattan, and in the five boroughs of New York. Arlene is a member of many national, regional, and professional decorative career groups. She's a longtime member of Salon, and with Jeannie Schnook hosted Salon New York City in 2017. Arlene's topic is going with the flow, changing the direction of your business during downtimes and a little bit more. Uh, thank you everyone, I appreciate it. Thank you, Margaret, for giving me the uh, opportunity. Um, I'm gonna start off with uh, a segue into two subjects. I have a redirection of your business during downtimes and I'm sure everyone in this room was affected by uh, the pandemic last year. So um, I'm gonna start with that and then I'm going to segue into uh, social media and how um, I cultivate almost 90% of my business from that. So I'm gonna start off with the pandemic last year. Uh, my governor shut down my state almost completely um, from uh, April to March, uh, I'm sorry, from March to uh, May. So I had really no business. I had about four cabinet jobs cancel on me, which equaled about $60,000. And um, I had no work, right? No, nobody wanted me in their house. And if you were caught driving with a commercial vehicle in a lot of areas on Long Island, you were getting pulled over and getting a ticket. So um, with no work, no phone calls and no being in people's houses. You know, I was home for like six weeks and I, I didn't want to be in the house anymore. I needed to get out. So two years ago, um, my husband is a New York City fireman. One of his colleagues uh, owns this house in Manhasset, uh, a very nice neighborhood on Long Island. He uh, had an extension put on the house. And as you can see here, this is the original whitewash from the 1920s on the house. This whole entire front and portico and part of the side didn't match. It was all brand new brick. So he was very hesitant. Uh, he had a flat painter come in and the guy just slapped some paint on the front of it and it really looked like garbage. So, you know, he, he's used me before. He has a couple of restaurants and I did some murals for him. So he called me and said, you know, I have a barbecue in the back and we do a test area. So I did a test area. My husband and I were hired to do the front of the house. You could go to the next picture. So the before and after, as you can see, is really striking, a lot of curb appeal, and we were able to match it perfectly. So after that house, two years ago, we got maybe three or four houses. So it, during the pandemic, I went online and I did a Facebook ad. I spent $50 uh, in a 60 mile radius. And within two weeks, my phone was ringing off the hook. And I'm not exaggerating. We did 50 houses last summer. We were outside. Uh, we, averaged, we averaged two houses a week. And it, it was a great summer, you know, um, from just doing, this is just plain flat Benjamin Moore um, masonry paint exterior. Um, we segue into, you can, you can just keep going now. I'll tell you what to stop. Um, we segue into uh, multicolored finishes. Like I have a couple of samples here. Like people didn't want just white. People wanted to match their siding. They wanted to match um, their party board. Uh, so not only were we doing white, we were doing tricolor, we were doing lime, and we were also doing mineral paints. And um, we were 
really the only people on Long Island doing it because you, you have people doing fireplaces, but you don't have anybody doing three colors. And the way we do the three colors is we paint each individual brick. We'll pick like one color as our dominant color. And I have a four person crew, myself, my husband, another fireman that my husband works with. He's been with me for 15 years. And then uh, last summer I had my son and my nephew jump in. So we had like a four or five man crew. Um, for somebody like myself, I can't lift uh, a 40 foot ladder, can't get it on my truck, can't get it off. So, you know, you know, as women, <laughs> yes, I mean, you know, as, as a woman, if you're a woman owned business, you definitely need, you know, some muscle to get those ladders on and off the truck. But for myself, I, I have my husband and I, my nephew's about 300 pounds and he's, so they, they take the ladders on and off. Most of the time we don't use scaffolding. We may use uh, pump jacks or um, uh, planks to get across in the front if there's an issue. But like a house like this, you could get with a 40 foot ladder or even a 20 foot extension ladder. And we'll start in the back always. We'll go to the house um, and I'll do a small area in a very inconspicuous spot, have the client come out, give me the thumbs up. And a house like this will typically take us six hours. But you know, a six hour house like this will charge 3,500. And you know, it, it, it works, it, you know? So I mean, the money is there, it's an untapped market. And the longevity of the product is, we don't do 100% coverage because the bricks have to be able to breathe. And it's not like you're rolling it on a solid coat. So like these examples here, I have, like these are very popular, like, you know, either warm tones or um, gray tones. And we'll pick a color, but like these are plastic, so you don't, it, you get like kind of an effect, but you don't get like the full feel. Like a brick has like that porosity to it. And really the brick does the work for you because we're using chip rocks, brushes, and you're just dragging the paint across. And the more texture the brick has, the better because it brings the character out for you. Um, so this is lime, this is lime. And uh, if you keep going a little bit, I mean, these are, this is a gray tone. Yeah, yeah, and they, they had that like 1970s stacked stone in the front. I mean, it was really hideous. And they send me paint and it looks like a brand new house. You keep going. Uh, this one was like super popular. This is like a three color effect. And the before is just like, you know, orangey red brick, but we did like three color tans and it matches the siding. You keep going. Same thing, same type of effect. Uh, this is gray, uh, but it was red before. And, uh, you know, we put a little black one in here and there. But it's, do, you, do you see the red in that house when you just looked at Do you see that at all when you're there? You do. But when you're up close on it, you'll see a little bit of the red coming through. Because I don't use a roller and I don't go over each brick three or four times. Oh, okay. So like, you know, like a typical dip, I call it a dip. And when I'm showing my husband and our other workers, I'll say, you know, you should hold on to this one. Um, I'll say you should be able to get four to eight bricks out of a dip, just so they have it in their head. So if we're going like back and forth, you, you'll you'll know how much to put on. So this house, um, uh, this is a, a chippy effect. And this effect, if you keep going, hopefully. Yeah, so this is lime, and the lime is a lot thicker than the uh, Benjamin Moore out of the can or the uh, mineral paint. And the, the great thing I love about the lime is you mix it up yourself. If you get it from Roma Bio or you get it from Kime, Kime comes pre-mixed, but it's still thick. And if you leave the cap off all the night, the day before you use it, it thickens up even more. So when you take it out and you have it on your chip brush, it's almost like um, cottage cheese, but not like curdy. And, and like, 
on a good brick. Like so there's some good brick and there's some crappy brick. Good brick has like a, a nice face to it, pretty smooth and it'll like grab the paint. Crappy brick has, some of them like are manufactured and they have ridges on them. And you really have to work if you're doing a house like this kind of effect to get that authentic look. And this chippy look it is, we call that um, wear patterns. So when we're putting the paint on, we're thinking that underneath the eaves, underneath um, any uh, portico they have, underneath windows, rain isn't gonna be hitting those areas as much. So we're gonna put the paint on a lot thicker. So if you keep going, like you see, this is that house, that was me, I was up here. Um, you see how we have like these uh, wear patterns and it would be where the water would take away the paint. So this house looks very authentic, like it was painted a hundred years ago. And um, this took us uh, 11 days, three of us. And um, if you keep going, I wanna show you, like this was the before, this is the pool house, this is the back. The biggest challenge here was the chimney. It was uh, 50 feet in the air. So if you keep going. Wow. Yeah, so we, we saved the hardest for the last. <laughs> I didn't go up there. Um, so this is uh, Richie. He's uh, a fine and works with my husband. Uh, he's been with me a long time. So uh, we, we work with the client. These are uh, called pump jacks. And uh, you easily put the plank on either one of those. They come right off. You can keep going. So uh, that's my uh, husband, Dale. Um, he actually had uh, rock climbing equipment and harnesses. So he had the rock climbing equipment, wrapped it around, and uh, climbed up the chimney to be able to get to that. But you could see. You can see the wear pattern, how we like went down the middle and like the edges and all underneath here were significantly heavier. So it looks like, you know, it was painted a hundred years ago. Keep going. Oh, really? Oh, okay. All right. So uh, I'm gonna, you know, unfortunately I saw it that it's the picture of, um, there was one thing <laughs> Okay, I just wanted to show, you can pass it around, but this is the rock climbing equipment and how he brought the uh, rope around and was literally like scaling that chimney. So, <laughs> so, um, safety first. Yeah, safety first. So, we did about 50 houses. Um, this is our most popular look. Uh, the Roma Bio is a great product. Like I said, you mix it yourself. It comes almost in a block and you water it, you add the water swirl mixer to get it to the consistency you want. The only problem with the Roma Bio is it's very difficult to get directly from the company. Home Depot sometimes stops it. If you're in the um, Northern East, Connecticut has a rings end, they stock it. Uh, Amazon will ship it to you overnight in a quart form. And a quart will give you almost a gallon if you water it down. Um, Kind, very expensive to ship, but they will get it to you like in three days. So, um, sorry. So we have the speckled look, we have the three color, we have the white wash, we have the lime wash. Now the benefits of the lime wash is that it's a natural product. Um, in the southern states, it, it won't wear significantly. It will like wear slowly, but like, like in my area, this will wear even more. Like over time, this will wear off maybe 10, 15 years. Um, the masonry paint from Benjamin Moore, very easy to get. Uh, any Benjamin Moore stops it. The uh, mineral paint, they give you from Kime, they give you a 25 year guarantee and they will tint it for you to any Sherwin Williams color or uh, Benjamin Moore color. It's expensive, but you have that peace of mind if you're doing, we have a house in two weeks that's by the water 
and it's right on the Long Island Sound. It gets the crap beat out of it, almost sandblasted. So we know that that kind mineral paint is going to really hold up. Uh, so now I, I just want to um, touch on. Does anybody have any questions about the lime painting? Roma Bio makes a lime paint, and Roma Bio makes a mineral paint. I've used both. Um, they're very easy to use. Uh, the way they show it on their website is they will put it on with a big masonry brush and then take a hose and wa wash it off. Uh, I don't do that. I put it on with the brush, and if I want to wipe it off, I'll take a wet rag. No, I, I, I mix all of my uh, lime paints right in the five gallon bucket with water so it's ready to go. And I mix it like this, that big house took us 20 gallons. So I had four or five gallon buckets that I mixed pre before we even got to the job site. And each one we knew was exactly the same ratio of water. So as we went, there was no discrepancy. Um, I'm sorry, sir. I don't do any of that. I'll go survey a house before I go. And um, in this instance, there was a lot of overgrowth and bushes. So I suggested they have their landscaper come and take those bushes out. Um, if there is uh, green mildew or moss growing on the houses or lichens, I suggest that they have a power washer come clean it off. If the brick needs to be repointed, I, I suggest a mason that I work with and he will go and take care of that before I even get there. Anyone else? The question I'm just expecting that I might have asked is how many years do you think I can get out of the well, well, there's a 25 year guarantee on the mineral paint from Kime and Roma Bio. The, um, the lime paint, there isn't any time guarantee, but in my experience, five years and there's no touch up. Um, if, there's, uh, if it's an area that gets a lot of water, you might have more, like if there's a downspout, you might have, you know, where. Um, but, the Benjamin Moore or the Sherwin Williams uh, masonry paint exterior. I, I did my own chimney eight years ago, and there's not an area chip on it, you know. So as long as you're not doing full coverage, you know, and too heavy, where the bricks can't breathe, then you're you're going to have a, a nice, um, you know, no touch up within five years. Yeah. So what about the crowd? You're just leaving them long. Um, well, I usually do not paint the grout unless the client asks for 100% coverage. So if they're asking for 100% coverage, you're going to use a much bigger brush and you're going to really slap that on. Um, but otherwise, no, I don't. You know, a lot of times bricks stick out, let's just say quarter inch, half inch. Are you doing like the top, that quarter of the top? Or just the very no, top? just the face. Okay, just the face. I mean, if they have black grout and it's like they ask for white, then I will charge them extra yeah. and we'll take the chip brush and run it down, okay. you know, and that goes pretty quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Okay, so uh, to segue into part two of this, um, what I said in the beginning was when this first happened and I went on social media and paid $50 for that ad and the, the yield was almost 50 houses. Um, I'm very, very big on social media. Uh, I really believe that it's the way for us as artists, decorative artists and painters to get business. And for the most part, it's free. So uh, for, for myself, I have a Facebook account, I have an Instagram account, and I have a website. Uh, I update my website once a year. I take the best jobs that I've had for the year, and I update and take things that aren't as interesting off. Uh, my Facebook page, I have two. I have a Facebook page that's Ollie McLaughlin murals and decorative painting that has um, albums. And I have put 
my brick painting in an album, my faux painting in an album, exciting ceilings, murals, kids' rooms, furniture, um, floors, anything that has a, a category of its own. Every single job I do goes onto my Facebook page with the hashtag of alleymurals.com. Uh, that Facebook page alone, it doesn't really matter to me how many followers I have. And I don't think, you know, a lot of people I know have 30,000 followers, 20,000, 15,000. To me, uh, followers are potential clients. So, I, you know, what do I need people from California following me? Or people from Georgia or Alaska? I, I need people in my area following me. So I, I follow designers and they follow me back. And more designers who follow me, their friends follow me. And I don't put every single job on Instagram, but I put the wow factor jobs on Instagram. And I also put all of my time-lapse videos. Time-lapse videos, people love them. You do a mural and you set up the camera and you're done with a, a mural in 30 seconds. <laughs> and people see it from start to finish. It generates interest. People share it. People like that. And we're in, we were just talking about this last night. We're in a society now that needs instant gratification. If you don't want to wait around for five minutes to see when a mural finishes, a time-lapse video is great for that because in 30 seconds, TikTok, it's 15 seconds or 30 seconds. What, what can you get accomplished in 15 or 30 seconds? But if you put a time-lapse of, of a before and after a furniture, people love that. Um, so those how-to videos are really, really important. And when you're on your Instagram page, hashtags are really important. You should hashtag back to your homepage. You should hashtag your designers, call your designers, tag your designers. And the same thing with um, what I said before, my Facebook page, I also made another one now. Um, one of my designers nicknamed me the Rick Whisperer. <laughs> it's, it's so funny, you know? So I hashtag that on everything. And it, it just brings back people to the page. So I highly recommend like, uh, a five dollar boost. If you have, if you post something on your Facebook page and you start getting a lot of um, authentic, organic likes, like let's say you post a, a mural and it gets fifty likes, if you boost it for five dollars, that five dollars is going to make a thousand more people in your area see it, and that's really important because those thousand people in your area now got a glimpse of what you do, and. Same thing with Facebook moms groups. I know they're full of like, you know, parents tattling on each other and complaining about parking spaces and bratty kids and stuff. But at the same time, those moms pages are invaluable. If somebody likes your work and they're gonna say, hey, I'm looking for a muralist. Everybody knows me in my town. Everybody knows me that I do kitchen cabinets. So it's really important to get on your mom's pages, get in your local um, uh, merchandising groups. There's a lot of marketing groups on Facebook, local. Uh, for me, it's like a Long Island business network, women's business network, New York business network. And all those places you can put an ad probably free. For me, it's free once a week. And you put an ad, you put your best uh, mural up or you put a new job that people were interested in and that's how you get some business that way as well. So, yeah. So anybody else have any more questions? No? Um, I have one about the people that you're working with. So you took people that are basically your family. Well, for two reasons. How do you feel comfortable with it at all? You know, well, well, for two reasons. My husband's a carpenter, but he's also very creative. Yeah. And um, safety is always first with him. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't have anybody set up a scaffold that I was going on unless it was my husband. Okay. Um, I don't really go on scaffolding unless he's on the job site because, 
you know, a lot of times we've worked over uh, stairwells and places that were very uncomfortable to get to, and literally he will be holding on to my belt buckle if I have to reach out on, you know, uh, a plank or something. Um, he's creative and, and uh, he's a, a fast learner. Um, the other uh, fireman that works with me, uh, he too is not afraid of heights. He's a man. And um, he, he's also a fast learner, and I was able to teach him faux painting so that he has my hand. So it's interchangeable when he and I are doing a faux paint. Um, my son and my nephew both have expressed wanting to take over my business. They both want to become uh, firemen and work my business on the side. So I've been training both of them. They're both uh, really good stencilers, really good faux painters and they both really know how to do this whitewashing, as does my daughter. So we don't, uh, for myself, I don't have any fear of anybody taking, I'm the only person on Long Island doing this, at this scale. There are other people doing like, you know, fireplaces or like single story homes, but nobody's doing two story homes. And I don't wanna teach somebody else when I'm cornering the market. You know, it's just, why would I do that? So for me, uh, I have my whole family working for me because I know nobody's going to go out and say, hey, you know, Aline McLaughlin taught me how to do this. It's like, you know, a monkey could do it, um, you know? <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, my son and my nephew, my husband, they, you know, they never, read, they're not artists, but you can teach somebody how, and it's very rewarding when you're standing there doing whitewash and this guy, you know, he's, he's all, we love him and he'll like, like an artist, hmm, did I get it, you know, did I get it right? And you know, those kind of things, you know, you can teach, one of, one of the girls we were talking to last night, you were saying last night, that you can teach people to have an eye and to see things artistically the way you do. So, um, you know, and plus it's great to work with your family. You know, we have a good time on the job site, we put some music on and, uh, you know, bang out of house and, you know, what, what's better than working with your family? And when you have myself, like I put 25 years into this business to have my son and my nephew really take an interest and want to go on jobs by themselves. In fact, my nephew, I let him go on a job by himself while I'm here. And he texted me all day yesterday, so proud of himself. So, you know, it, it's, very, it's very good to pass that torch to younger people yeah. because there isn't um, a huge interest anymore, and there are no faux schools on the northern east coast anymore. There used to be the finishing school, there used to be the faux school, and now there's nothing. So, you know, it's really important for us to share these ideas and this love of the arts with uh, younger people so that it continues. Very important. Are you yeah. taking off stuff? Are you taking off any of those windows and trim or are you just kind of being careful? If there is a copper uh, flashing on some of the windows, yeah. we'll take those off. If there are black shutters or dark shutters, we'll take those off. Always, no matter what, if there's like a railing yeah. and um, we have, we have, you can see in the picture, we have drops. Yeah, okay. You know, we protect the slate, yeah. we protect um, railings if there are railings. Uh, we're not spraying any water, so there's really virtually no drip or anything on these windows. If we were, yes, we would mask them with plastic. Yeah. Um, if there are, like my husband will take the downspouts off so that you can get behind them. Um, we'll take shutters off so that you can get behind them. Yeah. Um. So I have um, I have uh, some more pictures here, and I want to just share with you. This is the postcard that I had made up uh, when I first finished this the first house. So this I, I did a blast as well, and I always have like a hundred of these in my car because I know when we were driving yesterday, that whole street on Forsyth was all brick homes. And you, you know, you just drive up and I'll drive my, my son will stick one in every mailbox. But you know, you do one on a block, one in the neighborhood and everybody starts calling you. So 
uh, I don't know if you want to just, you know, pass some of these around if you're interested. And um, wait, so this means you're coming back to the Lowe's? If I get a phone call, I'll come to the Lowe's. Yeah, yeah. I'll have you come home. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I, I hope you all learned something, and I hope that you get inspired and, and bring it outside. Because I'm sorry that it took me 25 years to realize how much fun it is to work outside all summer. It's, awesome. you know, it's so good to just be outside, you know. It's your husband to do that. Come on. Yeah, it's great. Thank you, Arlene. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you, Arlene. And um, thank you, everyone who's watching. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.